Silver doesn't pay any interest, but you can get interest on a treasury. Sure you can, but you're still going backwards. Well, we'll certainly keep an eye on that going forward. I wonder if one of the things that perhaps is one of the last few steps that we're missing here, you can see this is the ETFs, also includes COMEX, but interesting here where we've seen a lot of metal come out of SLV and the other funds, which I would indicate as perhaps not so much mainstream fund participation in silver. And even over the uh, past couple of weeks when we saw silver go from 20 and change up to 25, you know, a couple inflows there, but probably this this bad boy here uh, almost knocking out all three of those. Different story in gold where here we've seen a lot of uh, fund inflow into GLD and the other ETFs. So... And you can see, I mean, from April until April for a year, all they did was drain it slowly. And I think that's exactly what they've been doing. And the people who are taking it out, they're not you and I. These are these are the most sophisticated, wealthy, uh, well-funded traders on the planet. Uh, another question that came in was based on something you talked about last week where you and Bill were talking about how you advocated junk silver, not maybe not advocated in, in many situations and you know especially if you get to a point where you're we're bartering or paying for things that junk silver comes in handy although this person was saying that if he's looking at silver i mean he had an allocation between coins and 100 ounce bars and if he's hoping that at some point there's a rise in the silver price and he's using that to buy rental properties or real estate or larger items what would you say in that scenario is is that makes sense to go to 100 ounce bars or maybe even 1000 ounce bars um if you're using it for a different type purpose than what we discussed last week yeah i mean if you if you if you're using it if you know what your intentions are uh, you're going to use it for big ticket items and yeah why not i mean take care of your your personal liquidity first and then get some bigger bars and and i think to me <clears throat> excuse me, more often than not, the savings that you find in larger bars often is not commensurate with the loss of flexibility. Now, I would say that mostly in gold, where you buy one ounce bars and you can save some money buying 10 ounce or kilo bars, but that savings is not commensurate with the loss of flexibility. In silver, it is more commensurate. I would choose 100 ounce bars over 1,000 ounce bars, even though the savings is, is significant, unless you are going to keep it in a storage facility and then use the, the price action to sell it and reposition to somewhere else. But quite frankly, mo most of the people I talk to, their, their time horizon is much longer than that. And if they say to me, look, I need to buy a property in six or eight months, I typically say, listen, as much as I'd like to earn your business, in good conscience, I have to tell you that I wouldn't recommend it. That, yeah, it may turn out to be the smartest thing you've ever done. Get your money out of the banks. Put it in something solid. But like I said, I've been at this game long enough to know you can bang your head against the wall when you see the world aflame and the, the powers that be do all they can to step on the neck of gold and silver. And if you need it for something, uh, whether it be to pay a down payment on a house or a college tuition or whatever it may be where you need it, I think you have to stop and think about the wisdom of investing it in something that could it could go sideways. I'd rather see the people put it in 60-day treasuries or 90-day treasuries, or at least you're guaranteed to get the return back, the principal back, back by the U.S. government. But in general, the answer to that question would be yes. If, if they're looking to, you know, make a large purchase and understand the risks associated with silver and see it as being a real opportunity as I do, as you do, then yeah, you would save money by buying hundred ounce bars and even thousand ounce bars in buying thousand ounce bars. You will have the storage expense in buying hundred ounce bars. You can take possession of it yourself and easily liquidate them yourself. Kilo bars and hundred ounce bars would be my choice. If you were going to buy, if you wanted to maximize your liquidity while also saving on buying items that didn't carry the premiums that the smaller units did. In fact, to me, the sweet spot over the last several years, and it is still today, would be the kilo silver bars, which have been actually less than the 100 ounce bars, which is unusual. So the Valcambi, the um, 
germanium mint, the Valcambi mint, and the Nadir mint are three kilo bars that are all very nice, that are all very affordable and, and would fit the bill very nicely on that. Okay, well, that makes a lot of sense and I'm um, sure our viewer will appreciate that one. Last uh, thing to go over with you today is a note that came out from the Silver Institute's report that was published last week that I know a lot of people have been digging through, showed quite a deficit last year. Uh, we'll highlight that real quick right here. Uh, 237.7 million ounces forecasting a deficit of 142 in 2023 this year so uh, but one note that they had in here which i thought would be interesting to run by you mentioned we also think that institutional investment will eventually run out of steam as we believe that the current market consensus that the fed will be forced to cut rates in the second half will be proven wrong this should see silver fall to the low 18s before year end culminating in a full year average of 21.30 down 2%. Um, now, they were mentioning recent boom in investor demand. So I wonder if they didn't mean retail investment, which is accounting for the uh, net big net physical investment numbers they have there. So I believe they might have meant retail there. But Based on what you've seen so far, do you, do you think that, A, the figures that you've seen this year are going to surpass last year? Uh, do you think they will run out of steam? And then uh, perhaps we'll answer that first before we talk about whether we see low 18s happening this year. So what? The Fed's going to raise interest rates? They've proven they can't raise rates above the level of inflation. The, the Bureau of Labor Statistics lies about the numbers of inflation. And even still, we can't raise them even above 4.5% without breaking the entire financial system, breaking it. And, and yet it's a real return, a negative real return. The, the knock that they're implying here is that silver doesn't pay any interest, but you can get interest on a treasury. Sure you can, but you're still going backwards. It's a negative real return in this environment. 